Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's roundtable discussion on what's coming next. Uh, the new IT and network priorities that we'll probably be seeing um, as we start to uh, the process of recovering from the COVID-19 coronavirus and the, the stay at home orders, etc. We know these times are difficult for everyone and we hope you are staying safe um, and we appreciate your attending our webinar. My name is Christopher Burt. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Live Action, and I'm going to be your moderator for today. Before we get started, I have a couple of housekeeping items to touch on. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to bring up a, a poll on the screen, and hopefully um, everyone in attendance can respond to that. And Mike, I can hear um, as you're getting set up, if you could mute. Let's see. Okay, so that should be on your screen now. So our goal for these sessions is to foster the communication within the IT and network management community on solving the problems and issues that are likely to surface for many companies over the coming months. During this session, I encourage you to ask questions, offer perspectives and, you know, on what you're seeing in your world and share with the rest of the audience. In order to do that, please use the chat or the Q&A panel in order to send me your questions, and I'll be sure to address them uh, with the panel as we go through our discussion. We will be hosting more of these sessions in the coming weeks. So if you don't get all of your questions answered today, or if you have more later on, you can always register and attend for another upcoming webinar, and we'll greatly appreciate your, your attendance. To give you some background on who Live Action is, so, so Live Action provides network performance management solutions, and these enable the network teams to achieve both operational and performance excellence in their network and in their in their operational role in order to support the success of the business. And this frequently um, comes up in a couple of particular use cases, right? So, for example, application performance, um, how do we optimize uh, the performance of the applications from the perspective of the network infrastructure and hardware? Um, our solutions help accelerate uh, troubleshooting of very common issues um, in order to optimize the, the user experience or the quality of experience of that network. Um, we assist with companies who are looking into how uh, ready is their network, uh, especially when it comes to agility um, and 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 respond to things like the sudden rise in work from home employees. Um, as companies deploy uh, new IT initiatives, um, these are uh, usually helped and, and and provide greater value to the organization if they're driven by data, meaning. Um, if we understand and baseline the network um, and we monitor the network as those changes are occurring in the network, we can see what's happening um, and adjust accordingly. Uh, additionally, we have a substantial reporting and analysis engine in order to develop um, visibility into everything that's going on in the network and to help organizations uh, um, better sort of uh, uh, track what is happening in their network over time. So I'm joined by two panelists today. Uh, we're going to hear from Mike O'Shea and Keith Parsons. So Mike, Keith, I know you're out there. If you could introduce yourselves, you know, it'll act as a as a mic check as well. Mike. Sure. Hey, Chris. Good morning. Um, this is Mike O'Shea. I'm based in RTP, North Carolina. I manage the uh, the worldwide SE team here at Live Action, and uh, happy to be with you. So thank you. And hello, I'm Keith Parsons. I'm a senior sales engineer with the company. I've been with the company 11 years, and uh, I'm based out of Birmingham, Alabama, and cover the southeast half of the United States. Terrific. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Keith. So in terms of our agenda for today, um, we're going to touch on briefly um, some of the immediate impacts that IT and network had seen from uh, as the, as the companies respond to COVID-19 and, and the, the shelter in place orders that many governments or companies had issued. Mm -hmm. um, this has created a shift in traffic patterns. It's created a, a, a need or a refocus on key performance telemetry metrics. Um, but primarily, 
um, the, the latter half is we're going to focus on what are some of the new initiatives that IT is going to be um, responding to, whether they're new business initiatives or environmental or economic pressures. Um, and ultimately, some of those changes are going to be built upon um, applications and the performance of those applications over the network. So we're going to do a, a, a demo of, of live NX um, as we look at how do we troubleshoot an application over the network. So obviously, the in the terms of the timeline of IT priorities, um, initially we see we see this occurring in three phases. Uh, primarily, the first phase um, was about dealing with the sudden surge in work from home employees. This went from maybe uh, an average of 10 to 20 percent of your employee staff to suddenly 70, 80, 100 percent of staff um, were working from home. Secondly. Um, that shift created a new focus on the WAN edge as those employees were reaching back into the, the, the corporate infrastructure in order to, to gain access to assets or data or what have you in order to be able to continue to work. Um, IT teams had to focus on, okay, is that secure? Um, how is the performance of that? Now, this happened in an, these two phases happened in an incredibly short amount of time. In fact, um, there was a comment from Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella who describes this as um, there was two years worth of digital transformation that occurred it within the time span of two months. And he goes on to say that over the past few months, we have transformed the way we interact with our loved ones, how we do our work, um, how we travel or don't travel, how we get medical care, how we spend our leisure time, and how we conduct our routine transactions of life. And these changes have accelerated the migration to digital technologies. And it's been at a uh, significant scale and speed across every sector. And this is our focus, right? Which is what's gonna happen next? What are the new IT priorities that we're gonna see down the future? And this new phase of the new normal is going to require businesses and specifically IT to reprioritize their long-term long projects to either focus on new initiatives and new opportunities, or they're going to have to adapt to new economic realities um, as budgets may be cut or constrained and teams have to figure out, again, uh, how to do more with less, um, all within the context of the ongoing response to COVID-19. So just one concrete example of what companies um, or, or IT teams had to adapt to is the surge in video conferencing, right? Um, for example, in, in Cisco's WebEx, they're seeing an extreme upsurge in, in meetings, meeting attendance, uh, meeting attendees in the month of March. Zoom is seeing incredible growth and Global Meet is also seeing incredible growth out in the Asia Pac region. And this format of conducting business at a distance is, is substituting or augmenting what would have occurred over business travel or canceled trade shows and events, distance learning for education or telehealth or telepresence approaches for healthcare. And this this spike of these stay at home orders um, is having a, a downstream effect on IT as well and IT has to be able to support this. So this is causing new traffic patterns to occur within the network. Um, primarily if employees were internal to their own uh, corporate network, a lot of that traffic would be occurring over the LAN, the campus network, Wi-Fi, et cetera. But primarily now everyone is external, both employees and customers. And that is shifting the traffic to where it occurs um, and where IT teams, and network teams need to focus their attention to in order to maintain that performance. And so um, it is critical that teams maintain visibility of that performance in order to be able to ensure that those services are available and functioning for those employees. So, it, you know, at this point, I want to open this up to our panel and I want to hear from Mike and I want to hear from uh, Keith as to what they're seeing out there. Um, and if we can go in that order, that would be great. Um, I'm also going to bring up the results of that first poll question. And during the conversation, I'll, I'll open up a, a second poll that will lead us into our next topic. So Mike, what are you seeing out there in terms of how customers are responding 
um, uh, to the changes in, in, in business priorities. So, uh, Chris, is, I think it's a great question. And, you know, I, I think that uh, early on, uh, there, the change was, um, you know, disbelief. Uh, then it turned into fear. And now it's kind of turning the, the, the page and it's going into, um, you know, a need to, to move forward. Um, but at the same time, when you have, and looking at the poll here, you know, you have supporting working from home. So obviously a huge shift in the work from home users. And in the past um, and, and in the future, it was always, okay, if we can build out this remote workforce, uh, this work from home, work from anywhere type of model, um, then it's going to be a percentage of our workforce. No one ever expected that it would go from a 20, 30 percent, you know, expectation to a near 100 percent. So there's so many times when we're talking to customers now where they either say they don't have anyone at the at the work site, or they have a skeleton crew at the work site, or even at Live Action in in uh, Palo Alto, it is a an approved skeleton crew at the work site. So there's a ton of changes um, just where people work. Uh, and I think the remote access is one of the biggest things. You see it here with 40%. Uh, a couple weeks back, I would say that, you know, probably shifted what, what your numbers are here, um, where you have that, that fear, that need um, about the work from home. And uh, one of the key reasons where I think companies are getting some answers right now uh, for their leadership is, okay, well, if I have a thousand people at my company, um, how many people are connected and what are they doing? That's probably the easy answer. The much harder answer that they certainly want to know is how many people are not working. And of those people who are not working, um, what is my cost associated with that? And what is the real reason of why they're not working in terms of are they not connecting? Can the service provider connections not handle the, the, the connectivity? Um, all those kind of things. But it's really not the what is, but what isn't. Uh, that is the question that I hear all the time. But keep in mind, you know, as we look at the work from home, the shift from work from home, that's one thing. We also look at the shift for the applications. Um, and lots of people, lots of customers will say, great, we have things on premise, but we want to shift it to the cloud because we want to have that auto scaling. Well, we all know that's not going to happen overnight. So that's a big challenge for companies. And whether that's, you know, the firewalls and, and uh, VPN termination or SSL termination or actual applications. So you see a huge shift from on-premise to cloud. But the, the groups that it's impacting, I'm going to just name a few from, you know, sales and support. Um, that, that's certainly having a huge impact, but it's about stabilizing things. And I think most companies at this point are in that, you know, stabilization mode. So now they're thinking, uh, okay, now what's next? And what's next in, in one company that we deal with is, um, okay, if we can do this now, why don't we shut down all sites that are less than 20 people? And if we can do this, in, you know, in, in some way uh, and being just at, at the doctor's office, think about telemedicine, the, you know, it's, patient qualification to say, okay, well, Mike, do you have a temperature? Have you felt bad? You know, they're asking 20 questions before a patient comes in. And that's the norm right now. But does that mean that the norm will change in the future? So in terms of telemedicine and patient care and qualifying patients before they come in, you know, we joke about sales and customers and things like that. Are they qualified or not? But in this case, it's medicine and it's our health. And I think that will certainly change in the future. Um, On-site meetings, think about salespeople, all the salespeople out there in the world. Are we moving to a, to a, a video-enabled workforce that is the norm and it's a greater percentage? So the salespeople who are usually knocking on the doors and having on-site meetings, now is that going to change because of the qualification uh, in the sense that 
you can bring your mask or you can uh, you can do it remotely. So I think there's lots of those kind of changes. And I'll just finally leave you with this one last thing that's you know pretty apparent is you know when you have companies, we'll just take a Cisco that's spending well over sixty million dollars for something like Cisco Live and it's canceled. In the past, there was a downturn where Cisco said, let's do it, let's do it virtually. And they called it from global sales meeting to global sales experience or GSM to GSX. Now it's a, a virtual experience, but is that going to be the norm? And then we have things like Amazon, Amazon shipping. You know, we expect Amazon shipping and prime and two day shipping. Now we have no idea when the shipment might actually come. It's not that prime, it's not that same service. And when people drop off the packages, they're essentially doing the dump and run at the front door but they don't want to they certainly don't want to talk to you and don't want to be near you so lots of shifts and changes in our environment and i think that um, we're just at the beginning of this applications which keith is going to talk about um, is the the impact of those applications and where they're running how they're running who's using it and what the impact is that's that's really where the bigger focus is as we move forward so Thanks, Mike. And Keith, what are you seeing out there? Well, we, we've seen a big drastic uptick, of course, in the number of people that are working from home. Uh, over the last, I would say, six to eight weeks, uh, I've really helped a lot of companies that have struggled uh, in VPN deployment. You know, they had 100 users normally through VPN. Now they've got 3,000 or even higher. So uh, there were some challenges there with bandwidth and uh, not having enough equipment that they've had to uh, overcome. But but what we do that's so unique uh, at Live Action and with Live NX is that uh, I have the ability to monitor those VPN connections through uh, Cisco AnyConnect, uh, Palo Alto, Fortinet, and others. We can actually monitor those VPN connections. So for the first time now, in the case of like Cisco AnyConnect. Uh, I can see all those users, uh, who they are, what applications they're using, what bandwidth is being uh, uh, being used. I can even see the application, the application types. I can even recognize the different types of browsers that they're even using. So we're providing great statistics from the application performance metrics and overall link health on the VPN customers. And so this has been, once again, a very popular, I've deployed a, uh, eight times in the last two weeks of being able to monitor VPN traffic. In addition, uh, being able to monitor traffic into the cloud. So whether it's AWS, Azure, et cetera, uh, that we now have the capability of doing that as well within LiveNX of bringing back detailed information from the cloud. What that allows me to do is I can actually stitch that traffic together from AWS back into my data center, data center out the VPN to the endpoint, and I can monitor that flow of traffic for performance and analysis and usage. So we're seeing an uptick in customers who are wanting to know more what's happening in the black spots in their network, such as what's happening in the cloud and what's happening over VPN and we're providing those solutions for them. So it has really been a big concern about visibility. What are my end users doing now? You know, my employees are at home. Uh, what applications are they using? And uh, we've even seen some issues. I was with a customer that was running split tunnel VPN and their internet traffic should be going out local, but it was coming back over into their corporate network. Uh, which was an issue and then I had a problem just recently as well uh, that all the VPN users or the majority were complaining of slow response and we went out and looked at a Windows update was being pushed out over the VPN uh, causing significant degradation. So once again, it's coming down to visibility now uh, with my users working remotely and how can I actually see how the performance, what they're doing, and then what users are on the network? Terrific. Thanks, Keith. Um, and now I want to transition to sort of thinking about 
okay, what's going to happen over the next three to six months? Um, again, I do want to encourage the audience, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the chat or Q&A window. And um, when we get to the point where we're, where we're discussing with the team, I'll bring up the results of the last poll that we ran while we were uh, uh, in the last discussion. So one thing that's going to change is budgets, right? Um, the headlines are going to be about layoffs. They're going to be about um, you know what's happening with the economy. And information technology budgets will need to be adjusted accordingly. Enterprises will plan their post-pandemic recoveries. And projects are going to be measured based upon savings, agility, and resilience, um, as well as um, thinking about how do we how do we grow? How do we uh, provide a better customer experience in this new normal? Um, so the question will become is how efficiently can IT utilize their infrastructure? How uh, efficiently can they use their, their tools? How efficiently can, can people and personnel be used? Um, and, and there's an opportunity there not to just sort of roll over and accept budget cuts, but for IT to provide more value to the business um, and to look for ways within their processes of how to generate and, and contribute to that value. So because necessity is often the mother of invention, the pandemic could bring some positive outcomes, right? Um, individuals, communities, businesses, and governments are all gonna learn new ways to connect with each other. Companies need to quickly rethink their customer journeys and accelerate the development of these digital solutions. And the emphasis is gonna be different for every sector or for every business type. For retailers, this may include creating a more seamless e-commerce experience. We see in these, these bullet points here that in Europe, which has maybe tended to lag in the adoption of e-commerce, suddenly that's picking up. Um, for auto companies, for example, they could need to establish new digital distribution models um, for handling trade-ins, for handling financing, for handling servicing, and even home delivery of cars. And for industries such as airlines, um, they have to ensure the health and safety will be essential. Um, they have to make sure that the passenger experience is contactless, right? And that includes check-in, that includes boarding, and that includes in-flight experiences. And these are all opportunities for new business initiatives which will then have the downstream effect on IT, right? And so in terms of um, our discussion today, you know, I, I, I'm curious to hear from, again, Mike and Keith, um, how you are seeing companies ad adapt to the new normal, right? How are they planning for the future? Um, and as I bring up the results, you'll see that, that there, there's a pretty even split between, um, you know, still continuing to support those work from home and, and collaboration tools, but also suddenly there's going to be the shift to initiate and accelerate projects that adapt to this new normal. And, and we talk about these will likely be applications um, in the future, um, or they will be based on types of applications, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, so Mike, Keith, um, I see Keith may have some technical issues right now, but we'll get him back on there. Uh, Mike, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, hey Chris, I, I think the the response to this to this question is very similar to what I'm hearing with the customers, and, and here's why I say that. Um, you know, in in the past, it, I think many many customers out there uh, are looking to do. Uh, you know, new things, drive new strategic initiatives, new applications, implementation, new systems for all sorts of things um, in their business. That's all new. Acquisitions are new. Uh, mergers are new. Uh, I have one company that everyone probably knows that uh, a huge entertainment company that is moving into a huge facility and all that's been put on hold. So the reason why I say that these these responses are similar to what uh, I've seen is uh, most companies have much of their new things put on hold. It doesn't mean that they're going away, but for the majority of companies, they want to get to the stabilization. 
And one of those things is, which you had on the screen just a second ago, it showed, it showed um, you know, the people working from home. So they need to, they need to get to that, that level where, and maybe unlike before, where, you know, that shift of, uh, you know, working from home is the norm, but the, the leadership at these companies need to make sure that the ability to do that, the bandwidth to, to uh, have, you know, for their connections and where, you know, how things get terminated and where it is and, and just the stability, they need to make sure that is now rock solid. Before, it was kind of a, you know, yeah, maybe we have 20% or 30% uh, work from home, maybe even 40%, and we'll just have to figure out if our firewalls can handle that, if our SP connections are sufficient. And it was, you know, it was a little bit loose. Um, these days, I think that shift from new uh, strategic initiatives is going from that into let's make sure whatever we have is rock solid. That's number one. And um, and uh, Chris, if you want to just show that show that screen, the results that you had, if you would, yeah. So um, so that's really that stabilize. Make sure whatever we have, it is rock solid. Not you know, let's go jump to five other projects and have you know uh, so many things in the hopper, and we're trying to nail it down and fix it and and, and grow it over time, which will take you know it could take six months 12 months 18 months i think really what's happening is whatever we have let's close it out let's verify it let's document it let's make it rock solid so no matter where the workforce is we know we can work that's one of the main things but in terms of initiate and accelerate projects to adapt to the new normal it is all about you know the placement of that workforce and now the placement of those applications and it's funny because you know, you can, I look at this as, as really three pillars for network operators, network engineers, solution architects, uh, directors of networking up to the CIO. You know, it's a lot of, okay, are we covered with security? What do we need to, you know, do there? And uh, their hair is on fire usually with security. Uh, the second thing is um, collaboration, like we are now, whether it's a go to webinar, WebEx, Zoom. I think everyone's probably heard of the stories of either Zoom problems or WebEx having uh, problems to connect with, you know, the usability and, and all of that. But the collaboration is that second pillar that they definitely want to invest in and make sure that is rock solid and all users have access, accounts, and there's really no excuses for that but the third pillar is which is what we've been talking about for years is is visibility into the network and no longer is it just you know an operations thing uh or or you know an architect thing in terms of new projects now it's an everything it's part of everyday conversation because the workforce that they have will it be the same today as it is tomorrow um, are they hiring? Do they stop hiring? Um, are, or are they reducing? So, you know, the, those questions are always on the back burner of the leadership team. But then if the, it, you know, whatever the workforce is for those applications, are we, are we maintaining the revenue? Are we slightly down? Or are we growing and investing in, a, in more of a, a, a tele, tele sales, WebEx sales um, kind of workforce? And do we change our, our go-to-market strategy in terms of the mix? Maybe maybe more you know virtual and less physical. Um, those are constant conversations. Um, but I think the applications and visibility as that third pillar is not just on the you know back burner as it has been in the past. It's a kind of a necessary evil when you buy a uh, thousand, hundred thousand, or million dollars worth of networking equipment from any one of the vendors, but now it's a requirement to know where things are. So just like I said before about those VPN users, making sure everyone's rock solid and can working and work, um, it's the same thing with the applications. There's too much money invested in the applications to not verify and validate that everything is working optimally. So operational excellence, um, it's not just uh, it's not just a marketing term. Now it's a requirement. That's what I'm seeing 
And I think with the with the reporting and the capabilities of the dashboards and that kind of thing uh, that, that LiveNX provides um, is front and center to all of this. People want to see data and a picture's worth a thousand words. If you don't have that and you think you can run to, you know, every router, every switch, every firewall out there and run some CLI commands, um, that's, that's, you know, days of the old. Now it's, you've got to verify, it's got to be proactive, you have to run schedule reports and you have to drop it in the inbox of the leadership team to verify. That's really what's going on. All the new stuff is, is, is it's on that, the new stuff is now on the back burner. Perfect, thanks Mike. And Keith, uh, before we get to the, the demo session, um, what are you seeing out there in terms of, uh, you know, not necessarily immediate today, but in that shorter term, shorter range um, perspective? Well, uh, Mike brought up two good points. One is security. Um, uh, we've seen several issues of uh, where I've helped customers recently uh, with the monitoring VPN traffic in the firewall, but we're also seeing an increase in hacking attacks through VPN type attempts even, and through just attacks in the network. Uh, we're seeing a big increase as well. So there has been more attention placed on security as well on what the employees are doing. Is the data secure? Uh, is the environment secure for the remote users? You know, I have uh, uh, just to mention my wife, she's working from home, but she works in uh, the healthcare industry and they require her to have a separate locked room for her to work remotely from that all the information that she works with uh, for Medicare is still secure. So they've even implemented rules, you know, even at her home office here on how she is supposed to handle data and visibility and logging on and the monitoring of the critical applications are all important. You know, I've seen some companies here recently that had money in the budget to do other things, infrastructure upgrades or replacing switches and routers. And when this hit, all their money got dedicated toward, like I said, having to install multiple firewalls now to handle the workload, uh, increases of bandwidth as well uh, to also handle the shift of people working at home. And so there is a lot of interest in, as Mike mentioned, reporting and analysis of what is going on in my network right now. I just got off of a call to come on this call. And the, the issue is that everybody has shifted from the data center going Going through to back going through the WAN and they need visibility there desperately uh, that they didn't have and we're providing that with them now through a, a proof of concept and they're just amazed at what issues that we're finding so visibility is becoming very important for us and other users and that's something that our platform does very well is uh, give that end-to-end -end visibility and analysis of applications, new applications, and as I mentioned, all the way back to the cloud where a lot of this traffic is going today to be able to monitor true end-to-end -end and see where problems may lie. Go ahead, thanks Keith. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna trans transition now to, um, you know, let's do a demo. Um, and, and I'll shift the presenter screen to you, Keith, in a second, right? But I want everybody to remember, um, we're going to focus on one aspect of our solution, which is primarily around uh, voice and video applications. Um, this is pertinent for things like uh, video collaboration, voice and video calls, VoIP calls, etc. Um, but in the broader context, um, applications are the way businesses are going to be creating value um, uh, you know, even greater focus on, on creating value moving forward. And so this can apply to um, other potential aspects of your network. And certainly there's more to the product and, and we'd love to have a conversation with you if you're, if you're having issues in your network as well. So Keith, I'm gonna change you to the presenter. Um, let's see, here we go. And I also wanna be sure to encourage our audience um, while Keith is giving his presentation, if you have any questions that you'd like Keith to answer, um, go ahead and enter them into the chat or Q&A window and uh, I'll bring them up to, to Keith and we'll be able to answer them during this session. So Keith, are you able to present and show your screen? 
Uh, well, I should be sharing it now. You should be Here seeing it. Okay. So, so everybody is uh, everybody is not familiar to LiveNX. Uh, LiveNX is a network monitoring and performance analysis platform. So uh, we have multiple views into our platform. Uh, we have views for knock engineers, as an example, uh, that can use the dashboards and the overviews and, and see how the status of the network is and generate reports. And the engineers have the engineering view. So what we're looking at here is a series of devices in the MPLS network. So the circles represent routers and switches. So see, I'm from Birmingham, and see, here's my Cisco router or any vendor's router, it would appear, and the smaller circles are the interfaces. You see, you can see the bandwidth measurements, the square indicates a QoS policy, and the amber indication indicates a problem. An interface drop, class drop, queue drop, or congestion is occurring on these devices that are amber. We send the alerts that are very detailed. See media loss event, interfaces down, class drop rates, high retransmissions. All of this is being done through NetFlow coming from the routers and switches. So I'm alerting you on conditions that are occurring through the network. What is unique is that the lines you see are the actual applications flowing through the network. So web is green and internet is red and voice is yellow. And we can see those conversations, every single conversation coming on and off your network, I now have, and I can drill down to a path analysis. Uh, so as an example, as I mentioned, I'm in Birmingham, and let's look at the voice traffic from Birmingham. Notice in the topology map that I will actually draw the path. See, using NetFlow, I can see the, uh, the conversations going through the router, over the cloud, into my data center, into the back end. Now, what is unique is that, for those of you who are familiar with quality of service, I can see the class markings. So most of the time, in 99% of the networks, voice is protected through quality of service. So it's in its own class, it's protected, and you know it's secure to being drops and things of that nature. But notice in this example, the red line indicates the EF class of service for voice. And so from the data center all the way to Birmingham, my traffic is being protected the way it should be. But leaving Birmingham, the traffic is blue for best effort, indicating it's in the class with YouTube and Facebook, which is not where I want my voice traffic. Now in Birmingham, on this interface, we should have a QoS policy. Notice I can, with our platform, jump to Birmingham and look and see there's no policy at all. One of the features of LiveNX is that I can deploy quality of service. So I can create my own policies. You can use my templates that are based off Cisco best practices as an example, or in your network as me being an administrator, I can actually pull the policies via command line and apply the policy to this interface without having to push out those hundreds of lines of code. Now we can analyze the policy, go in depth, uh, that we can show uh, uh, in another demo, but I wanna show that as we go back to the analysis that there's also an amber interface in the path. You see on the egress side, if we drill down and take a look at that interface, what we can see is a breakdown first at the top of the screen by application. Over 1,500 applications I can break open. So I can see the WebEx, I can see Zoom, I can see Microsoft Teams, I can see Skype, I can see any RTP traffic, whether it's video, teleconferencing, can all be monitored through the network very easily. Easily. At the bottom of the screen is the shaping policy for quality of service, and notice the voice class is amber, which is our way of showing that it's dropping traffic in that class. So you see, that's not good, is it, that we're dropping at 80K, so that's going to certainly cause voice problems. As an administrator, I can adjust the output QoS and see at the top of the screen, voice has priority queuing, but we only reserved 8K. 
we're dropping 80K worth of traffic. So I need to allocate at least 90K. The pie chart shows I didn't oversubscribe the circuit. 7% is still available. Preview the CLI for changes because you may have to do change control. But I'm going ahead and saving to device to modify that policy instantly on this device. This is all backed up in reports as well. So CPU, memory, bandwidth, utilization, applications, drill down to users is all there. And we have that capability of being able to drill down and see every conversation for as long as you'd like to store the data. So, you know, as we can see the, uh, 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 the, the policies in the path, I want to show you now, I'm going to refresh and let's take a look at what we've accomplished here in just a few minutes. Look, the traffic is now in the right class in both directions all the way through. All green interfaces in the path means there's no interface drops, class drops, queue drops, or congestion. So very easily, I was able to troubleshoot a voice over IP problem that's going through the network. So any application problem can be examined as well. So whether it's WebEx or, or what application you have, I have the ability of going out and doing a snapshot and looking at all those conversations coming through the network. See, I can filter and drill down on a particular conversation or user. Bob just called from Seattle and said he's having problems. I can do flow.it in the upper left corner and put Put in his IP address and see instantly drill down to Bob and find out what's going on. So let's filter down and there's Bob and see in this example, uh, we can see the traffic marked red in one direction, but blue in the other. We've lost our class markings with the service provider uh, in this particular example. So we're running quality of service, but the service provider has dropped that traffic going, uh, coming out of the cloud, has dropped the class to best effort. And see, I can look at this in current time, or I could go back 120 days, let's say back to Sunday at 1033, 14 seconds after the minute, I can refresh, and then I can go back and have that exact view of what was happening at that particular time. So as you can see, the ability of being able to uh, drill down and go back in time and look at one conversation or all the conversations. This all rolls up into our dashboard of being able to look at the sites, devices, the interfaces, and then even each of us have our own uh, dashboard. So I can build widgets to be able to see what you want to see. Keith, I just want to see the data on the WAN. I want to see the data on my VPN only as an example. And that leads me to this example of monitoring VPN traffic. This is me looking at a Cisco AnyConnect, but this is all the VPN traffic, and I can break it down by different applications. Look, here's Chrome, but here's a different version of Chrome, the third one down, and I can tell that by the application hash, or I can group them all together. So all the Chrome traffic or all the meetings, then I can do it by device. You see, here I am in the middle, desktop, ASF, K9S, that's me right now on the VPN on this WebEx. And see, I have an Alienware machine that it can even detect the operating system. And then, of course, bytes in and bytes out, who's consuming the bandwidth. And then I can see it from a user summary view and then from the application view. So you see here is each user. I can see the parent account, the process account, the application that's running, the DNS suffix, the destination host name. So I can have great visibility into what our remote users are doing. Palo Alto, you know, Fortinet, you know, uh, you know, Cisco, AnyConnect, VPN. So using the multiple firewalls, I can extract uh, this information for you to see truly what is going on with my remote user. Chris, is this okay, sir? That was terrific, Keith. Thank you. Uh, and I see we're getting close to running out of time. Um, <clears throat> so I think we'll we'll close the demo there. And, and Keith, I'm going to 
take their presenter role back. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Thank you again, Keith. Let's... Okay, so you should be able to see my screen again. Um, so any questions from the from the uh, audience, um, please be, remember to enter them into the chat or Q and A window. Um, I know we had one question come up about AnyConnect, which is um, how the licensing works and how the integration works. And Keith, I don't know if you want to comment on that. Oh, it's very easy. Um, in live action, uh, everything is a device, a router or a switch or a firewall. So we simply add uh, the router or the firewall, in the case the uh, firewall, we add it as a device in live NX. And then, then I send you a document uh, to enable the NVM feature within the uh, firewall. And then the firewall generates flows. And then we receive those flows and then process them into reports and the information I've shown. Hey, just a, just a comment on that. So the licensing for the ASA, it does require the Cisco Apex license. Um, and that will allow you to uh, enable the NVM network visibility module. So that is required on the live and X side. It's just a device uh, in, a, in a firewall. So FYI on that Apex license. Got it. So, so we do have a follow-on question in terms of um, what is the the resource that uh, the resource requirements of live NX with respect to the Cisco ASA, right? Um, is it bogging down or is it, you know, what does it consume, et cetera? Oh, not at all. It doesn't put a load on the uh, ASA at all. There's actually two types of information that can be exported from the ASA. One is the NSEL template, Network Security Event Log, and that gives me conditions. It shows me attacks. It shows every connection going through the firewall, all the connections, and I even can see NAT translation. That that does not put a hit on the uh, firewall at all as far as CPU and memory. Then you can enable the NVM module to do the flow export, and we have yet to see an increase uh, in CPU or memory or a decrease of performance uh, to run the AnyConnect feature in the firewall. It was designed to be turned on and export this uh, uh, log information that we convert into a flow. So uh, it's very straightforward and simple, and we can provide the document if necessary that you'd like to see, but uh, this is approved by Cisco. You know, Cisco is one of our major partners and investors, and uh, this is something I've been doing since 2015. Uh, uh, is the AnyConnect VPN. Oh, got it. Thanks, Keith. Um, so I'm going to transition here. Let's see. Let me do a little bit of housekeeping just to make sure I'm showing all parts of the screen. And the button click is not very responsive. Yeah, we can see your screen. How can we help, Chris? Oh, um, every time I, I try to change the what I'm presenting, it's just a little slow. Let me, uh, uh, here we go. There, is that better? And we just see the title of the uh, session. Now we see the slide. Okay. Sorry about that. <clears throat> So let me uh, take a step back. So, so we're getting close to the top of the hour. Um, again, um, uh, let's see, there's one last question that got slipped in. What is the load placed on the network to transport the NetFlow to the collector? Oh, that's a great question. And we're asked that quite a lot. Uh, typical load on the network for flow to be sent is 0.4% of the bandwidth. So if the circuit was the uh, uh, was running at 100% utilization, uh, we would be 0.4% of that utilization to send the flow records. Got it. Okay, Keith. So um, we are getting close to the top of the hour. Um, I do want to remind everybody, um, you know, we are here to help. 
right? If you have additional questions, if you if you need additional follow up, um, we can have that conversation multiple ways, right? If you just want us to to have a conversation about um, you know a, a network assessment, how are you currently sort of set up to 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 monitor the performance of your network? We're happy to do a performance review session with you. If you'd like to, you can download the LiveNX demo session, um, a demo from the LiveNX website. Um, or sorry, a demo session would be with our team uh, to give you a deeper demo of the product. And then the LiveNX trial, which can be downloaded from the Live Action website. And this slide, um, it's been shared to the audience as a, uh, as a document within this webinar. So you would be able to download this and click on these links uh, to get to these pages quickly. Um, so I do want to thank everyone for attending. Um, I want to thank our presenters for today. You know, thank you, Keith. Thank you, Mike. Um, and again, everybody stay safe and healthy. And we're, we'll conclude the webinar here. Thank you again. Thanks, Chris. Sure.